So Justin won uh, in in uh, what's called Fierce Fighting Championship. And I want to show you guys the ending sequence, and we're going to talk about it. And we're I, this is going to be really cool because uh, I want to. I'm going to ask all the questions like I want to know about the emotions that go through something like this in this entire journey. By the way, just to give you guys a little heads up, if I remember correctly, I think even the announcer said it. Justin hadn't. You know, the the truth of the matter is he had an injury. He was out of commission for two years. He hadn't had a win. At the, is, correct me if I'm wrong. In three and a half years, is that right? That's correct. So this this is a, a huge win. And moreover, I want to point out that I went to Justin's fight in when it was in LA um, in October, I believe, or November. And he looked like a completely different fighter here, which is something that I want to ask about, like how, how, you know, why does that happen? How does that happen? And then what does it feel like when you kind of get everything back and now you're and now you're free flowing and all that stuff so i'm gonna show you this fight we're not gonna show the entire fight even though it was a very short fight we're only gonna show the last minute but uh here we go let's uh let's check this out i got it i got it queued up over here so here we go we're just gonna play it and you guys check it out what a finish and over and over again jane's taxing the target all over the lower body and the head of hardman can can james hold up if Hardman's chin hold up, can, can James continue this this pressure and keep landing those shots? Now Hardman's connected. As accurate and as good as he has looked over the past three and a half years is James as he closes in again and devastates the chin of Hardman once again. I mean, it's well documented. Hardman's tough. Hardman's as hard as a coffin nail. Hardman's left leg is bruising Ooh. bad. He's taking some bad shots. Hardman oh. on a wobbly foundation. Jane's everything is hidden. Oh. James's corner wants him to oh charge through. Oh my god! Through. Oh my god! He's sinking in a choke here. There it is, Justin James, first win in three and a half years. Okay, we're gonna stop it right there. Oh, okay. So now that I think that's like the third time I've watched this. Hold on, let me stop it. Man, I actually didn't realize. So you were you clocked him bad, and he was I like then you were hitting him with those knees. It looked like he was he was ready to he was kind of I hate to say this because I don't know if this is true, but like it seemed like he was ready to give in or give up. And then when that choke came, it was kind of his exit ticket. Did you feel like that? Or because you looked not in really bad shape. You 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 nailed you nailed the uh, you nailed it right on the head, man. It's he. So we knew Carson Hardman was tough, regardless of the 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 build up. And I don't really care for the guy. You know, he made this fuck. So it was just a fucking weird fight week, dude. Like I'm in the middle of my weight cut. My dad tells me, "Hey, I'm having pressure on my heart. I can't breathe." He's in. He's with me in my hotel, and he's like, "I gotta go to the hospital. I gotta go to the ER. Like something isn't right." I was like, "Fuck!" So I call my manager. This is again the night before. I call my manager. I'm like, hey, dude, like, I need to go with my, I need to go to take my dad to the hospital. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this fight. Like, call it off. He's like, all right, just, just relax. Yeah. I'll call the promotion. So I'll call the promotion. See what we can do. So he calls the promotion. Zach at Fierce Fighting, man. Fierce Fighting took care of me and my dad so good. I have nothing but great things to say about him. They sent somebody over uh, with the van. They picked my dad up, took him to the hospital. Lance, my manager at Iridium, says, hey, look, I know you want to be with your dad, but if you go to the hospital with your dad, the fight's gonna be off. You gotta, you gotta tr still try to make weight. And I'm like, Lance, I don't give a fuck about making weight. I don't give a fuck about this fight. Like, blah, blah, blah. And he's, hey, man, chill out, relax. Like, we'll take care of it. So Jordan Christensen, my boy, BKFC fighter, one of my closest friends at Extreme Couture. Hey, Justin, don't worry. I'll take care of your dad. I'll take him yeah. to the hospital so he has somebody to be with us. All right, bet. So uh, Carson comes out with this video, you know, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to cut weight. I don't want to fight. Like, I was just fucking over this shit. You know, it seems yeah. like all this shit is always happening to me. Like, fuck. You know, just so much more adversity to deal with. Uh, uh, we get a hold of Carson. Carson posts this fucking stupid video talking about how he has issues and how he's a pro and this and that. I don't give a fuck about the money. I don't give a fuck about the fight. Family comes first. Long story short, I show up. Fight goes on. And we knew Carson was going to be tough. You look at all his fights, dude. Guy's durable as fuck. Re again, regardless of how I feel about him as a person, he's tough. And, uh, man, I landed some big shots. As, uh, broke his left orbital. Broke his nose. Uh, I think the knees in that final sequence, if you notice when I snatch up that front headlock, I knee him twice. And after that second knee hits him right in his fucking face, he just starts yeah. leaking all over the floor. Yeah. Uh, but to, to your credit, you're absolutely right. When I grabbed his head, you know, the defense to that is to fight the hands and tuck your chin. 
that's not what Carson Harden did. When yeah. I, could, I could feel him lifting his head. I could <laughs> feel it. And I was like, you little bitch. Uh, bitch. Oh and I, I, he gave me the choke. He wanted out. Um, again, don't really care for the guy. Uh, yeah. Again, talked a little bit of shit online after the fight. Hey, I told him we can run it back at 55, 60, 65, 70. Uh, that was just a pure outclass ass whooping delivered by the guitar hero. And like I said, he wanted out of the fight. There's like, he thinks, oh, we're going to go to welterweight. He's a welterweight champ. I'll go up to welterweight. I'll take his belt if I want. I allow him to have that belt now because I already know how much better I am than him. Like I said, Carson Harden is going to be out for a while, dude. He has a broken left orbital. He has a broken nose. And uh, I mean, dude, the, the the video doesn't give it justice. That guy was fucked up. And when you see the picture, you know, I, I, I kind of like, so they told us before, they're like, hey, look, when you and Carson come to come to the standoff, which I didn't even go to, as soon as I stepped on the scale, I ran out. I told the commission, I kind of got a little attitude with the commission. I was like, I don't give a fuck about this fight. Like, you guys want to call the fight off? It's fine. I'm going to see my dad right now. Weigh-ins are done. So I left. The commission's like, hey, no beef with Carson. Then after, they're like, hey, because if you saw on my video leading up, Carson flicked off Baba Jeet, uh, you know, and told him to go back to his country. He got a 60 day suspension for that, which I think is appropriate. So before the fight, they're like, Hey, if you do any obscene hand gestures, we're going to suspend you. So mm -hmm. after I fucking crack him, I'm looking at him, everyone's holding him up. You know, his face is all leaking. You can see this big pile of blood. I was thinking to myself, like, what could I do right now? That's not obscene. So mm -hmm. I think of like Pokemon Ash catch him. So I was like, peace sign. Mm -hmm. And I start pointing at him. And like, what are you going to suspend me for giving him a peace sign? I was like, peace, boom. It's right. all leaked up. I thought it was a pretty hard photo. Uh, but fuck Carson Hardman, Justin James is back. I just, man, I don't know what it was. Everything seemed in slow motion. I could see everything coming. He didn't land any punches. I look as good as I did, you know, before the fight. Um, you know, I, I just felt like, I felt like a different animal in there. And, you know, I even, unfortunately, there's a point, you know, in the video that you just showed that he throws a right hand. I slipped the right hand and my ear is kind of like right on his lap. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking in my head at that point, like, oh, I could take him down and finish him. I was like, nah, fucking, I pushed him away. And I was like, let's fucking fight. Because dude, man, I got in that street fighter mentality before the fight. I was like, I'm gonna make this a fucking dog fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this guy hurt. I, there's a couple things I'm good at. Fucking brawling is one of them. As you can see, we get in those, we get in a couple of those brawls, man. I tell you what, I hit some nasty and nasty overhand rights. Left hook, he told my manager that he was out on his feet after the first left hook, you know, 30 seconds into the fight. So, hey, hats off for him being a tough guy, but mm -hmm. it wasn't that tough. Uh, so I didn't show the, the first two minutes. Actually, the, th the when I just realized uh, showing the last minute, the first two minutes, you, your striking was really crisp and you were just tagging him in. And it looked like there was a speed difference because he wasn't he was having a really hard time to connect. Like he did connect, I think, like once in that last minute. But the first two minutes, he was having a real hard time. Now, very, I have like so many questions. But my first question is. I looked at the odds prior to the fight and it was like 90 and like topology it was like saying 93% chance they were picking uh, Carson over you. And, but yet it seemed like there was such a differential in your skill. Like you were much higher level skill. Like why was that just, do you think that's just based on your time off? And like, why do you think the odds were that way? You know, it's hard to come back from the adversity that I faced, you know, especially next surgery. And as you saw in my last fight, you know, maybe I was a little hesitant. You know, because it's like, fuck, is my neck going to hold up? And, and this guy kind of just let it all loose, man. And, you know, I, I really think that's probably why. They're like, hey, the guy's old. He's, Carson's 28 years old. You know, he's 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 beaten. So he's, you know, 14 and four going into the fight with 11 finishes. Like, you know, he's, he's a young kid with less damage. But with that being said, you know, as I talked to Lance, you know, my manager, it's like, Bro, my last six fights have all been UFC quality fights. If not, I mean, five of the six are UFC vets. And then the sixth guy who I, that you saw in California is going to be in the UFC this year. Carson oh, Hardman's wow. A, yeah, I mean, dude, the, the, I mean, there's no doubt. That guy's fucking tough, man. Regardless of, you know, do I agree with Chris Lee or not, that has nothing to talk about with Chris Padilla. Chris Padilla is tough, dude. I think he's going to be in the UFC by the end of the year. Now, Carson Harden, on the other hand, is probably the lesser of those six opponents and, you know, I finally just got the confidence to get in there and bang it out, man. And like I said, it, it felt like he was in slow motion. I could see everything coming. His punches were slow. With that being said as well, he didn't want to over-engage, uh, over-commit to his shots from my understanding because he thought I was going to stick to my game plan and wrestle. And unfortunately, that's something I'm just not good at right now is sticking to the wrestling mm -hmm. game plan because once I land this left hook, man, it's it's like a heroin shot, dude. I just want another one and another one and another one. And bop, bop, bop. 
fucking sleep these bitches, man. And all in a day, baby. Hey, keep counting me out. And, uh, you know, there, there's one thing that I'm not saying I'm going to win every fight in the world or I'm the baddest motherfucker, but mm -hmm. I have a really hard time giving up. So that's, that's, that's all there is to it. It's so interesting you say that it's like uh, whatever, you know, like a, taking a drug when you when you land a hook, because that's why people say, I guess, you fall in love with the striking. And, you know, just from training for me, it, it is it feels so good to even to even just crack the pads or like a little bit of light sparring. It's it's so much fun. I OK, so I have a couple thoughts. One, to me, you looked completely different from when I saw your fight in California when you fought Chris Padilla, like completely different in, in my opinion. I even showed it to, I sent the video to my friend Sarah, if you remember, she sat front row with me and she said the same thing. And she, you know, she's an untrained eye, but like, that's a pretty, I didn't say a word to her. I was just like, yo, check this out. She like, he looks totally different. Uh, so ba be, based on, I mean, how did you, did you feel like a, a different fighter, A, and then a follow-up question, I mean, do you feel pretty confident now that if you fought Chris Padilla again, you, you'd beat him? Or do you still think it'd be a, a good fight? Like, what do you think? Oh, dude, man, I'm not, I don't like to go out and tell, you know, tell, you know, the guy beat me fair and square. I mean, well, I shouldn't say, I, I didn't, I didn't really care for the decision, but dude, he's a tough yeah. dude. And that's a coin flip fight. You know, it's, I, I would have okay. to really adjust the game plan there and stick to the game plan. You know, I do feel my grappling is, I mean, regardless of how the fight ended, uh, I know mm -hmm. some people might call me stupid for saying, I still do feel my grappling is better than his. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just unfortunately found myself in a couple bad spots and, you know, it's, it's, uh, Chris Padilla is super tough, man, and that'd be a great fight. I'd love to get back, uh, but, you know, I'm not in any position right now. I've just won one fight, you know, once I get two, three, four in a row, then I'll start calling my shots. Right now, uh, I'm scheduled March 15th against David Gardner. Uh, he's an old school vet that's been around for a really long time. I'm going to go fight him in Michigan. Uh, that's really what's next on my bucket list. I got a, I got a call uh, this morning. I haven't even called him back because I already know why they called. They want me to fight uh, Tommy McMillan, 6-0. Uh, he's one, he's, he is Sean, the prodigy is Sean O'Malley. He, he plays the Sean O'Malley part right now. Sean's in his corner. Tim Welch is in his corner. Um, I've commentated this guy at fusion. Um, he's a featherweight, but he's missed weight two or three times in a row. So they're talking about sending him up to lightweight to fight me after I get a fight team. With that being said, I'm not a fucking gatekeeper either. You know what I mean? And I don't want these guys to treat me like, Oh, you should fight Tommy and blah, blah, blah. Let's get back to the UFC. We'll see. We'll see. All I care about is fighting David Gardner right now. But to answer your question, man, everything leading up, I was excited to get in the cage. I was excited to throw leather. I was excited to kick this guy in the leg and, and, and watch him fucking crumble. Because I tell you what, those leg kicks were fucking gnarly. And I know that yeah. motherfucker walking around with a limp at least for another week. And you know what? I, I just felt I just felt like myself again, man. And, you know, anybody that's seen me fight before in the first 10 years of my career prior to getting to the UFC is this is how all my fights went, man. Even if I lost, like there was just knock them down, drag them out, banger fights. And, you know, in the UFC, I think I got a little hesitant. I wasn't I was trying not to lose. And in MMA, when you try not to lose, man, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. And, you know, I fought Carl Dean, you know, UFC vet like. Fuck, I was very emotional, and I was like, fuck, I can't go to the regional show and lose. And I kind of just felt at this point, it's like, hey, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to go in there and bang, bang on this guy. And, and fortunately, it worked out for me this time. And the last thing I want to ask is, what are the what's the emotions like? Because for somebody like me who always fantasizes about having a real fight, right, but probably will never do it. Well, never say never, but prob most likely will not do it. What is What are the emotions like for you? after kind of a layoff, having an injury, not sure what you were going to be like. And I know you don't remember this, but when we were talking after your last fight, you were almost like contemplating, you know, what, what might be next for you. Now you come back, you have this, this amazing win. You look completely different. Uh, and I, you know, maybe you're even, uh, I would imagine you seem better than even ever, right? Where your neck is fixed. Also. Like what's the emotions like right now? Are you on a high or are you just thinking about the next thing? Just thinking about the next thing, man. This is one step in front of the other. You know, it's such been an emotional road. And, you know, I just tagged you in my post-fight interview or my post-fight speech. Get a second to watch mm -hmm. or you can share it on here if you want. Yeah. It's, I mean, I wake up fucking in the dumps, fucking crying like a little bitch. Oh, my life sucks. It's now. I mean, you heard a little bit of it after the fights. That's the lows of this sport. But, you know, mm -hmm. like my bed's right over here. As soon as I wake up, I look right to the right side of my TV. And there's a picture of my son over there. And I get really emotional about it, talking about it because I wake up, it's like, fuck, I'm sore. I don't want to get up. But as soon as I sit up, that's the first thing I see. And it's like, look, I moved to Las Vegas, you know, for a purpose and for a reason. And I can't, I have to show him that, 
no matter how tough things get, we can persevere through anything, bro. And dude, I went, like I said, in that post-fight speech, neck surgery, hand surgery, nose surgery, three surgeries, three years, cut from the UFC, lose all my money. I mean, you understand my financial situation. Like, mm-hmm. this is not an easy lifestyle, man. And I've went to give up so many times and I've tried to give up so many times. You know, Chell Sonnen, a lot of coach, or uh, not Chell Sonnen, a lot of coaches always say in the, in the workroom, it's, you know, Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. And that's so not true. Chell Sonnen said it perfect. Quitting is the easiest option. Mm -hmm. Anybody can quit. We can quit this podcast right now and never do it again. And we'll, and you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. and you can quit your job and just never like, that's the easiest thing to do. The hard thing to do is getting up and trying to persevere, man. And like I said, going through all that shit, one thing after another, after another, after another, I finally have my neck surgery. I fight Chris Padilla. It's like, all right, I think I'm feeling good. And then to have, you know, a bonkers situation with Chris Lieben that I've never had in 77 fights in the history. It's like, what the fuck? What, what? I just keep bending and bending and bending. And, you know, eventually I thought I was going to break and I, and I'm sure I did in my head break a couple times, but I kept waking up. I kept showing up to the gym. I kept training. I kept booking fights and and here we are. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, 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 so this is fucking wild, man. And, mm-hmm. and there's a short story. I'm going to give the short version of this story. So when I got to the UFC and beat Frank Camacho, this mm-hmm. woman hit me up and we went back and forth. A, a girl I knew since I was in, a, a lady I knew that I was in college. She's older. She's in her fifties, maybe even sixties. Mm-hmm. And long story short, she had an issue with me and she told me, she goes, Justin, I'm going to put a spell on you and you're never going to, I swear to God, this is real talk. I'm, I was losing my mind yesterday. She goes, I'm going to put a spell on you and you're never going to win a fight again uh, for the rest of your career. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I swear to God, I lose sick. After she wrote me this message, I fucking block. I deleted it and blocked her and I lost six fights in a row. Check oh. this, check this out. This is real talk. And I, and I, and, and I can show this. The night before my fight, February 9th at 7.30 p.m., I'm laying in bed watching Cell Block 99. I get a fucking text message from this woman. I haven't talked to her in years. And she's like, hey, I just want to let you know I I wish you the best and I hope the best for you. And I kind of make a joke. I was like, oh, does that mean you took the spell off? She goes, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was, you know, uh, it it was, I was on drug. I I don't, she didn't say drugs, but she was on something like some kind of medicine that was distorting her head. And she's like, I'm really sorry. Um, I just want you to know that I wish nothing but the best for you and your family. And then I fucking win this fight. Like that's fucking wild. Crazy. Crazy. Like the day before, I haven't talked to this woman in years, and she hits me up the day before my fight to take this spell off me, and I just go out there and fucking smash this dude. Come on, man! Whether you believe or not, dude. Did you call? Did you text her or call her after you won? Yeah, I did, and and I said, "Thank you for taking the spell off." LOL, and then some hearts, and she uh, never wow, so, dude. I mean, I can't make this up, dude. I I, I was I was at, I went clubbing last night. I had some friends in town. We went to some clubs. And uh-huh. uh, I was showing them the text. I'm like, February 9th, look, 7.30 p.m. This bitch texted me that I'm the spell is off the night before my fight. Like, hey, man, I'm not saying I believe in that. I'm not saying I not, I don't believe in it. But that's fucking wild, dude. That's so crazy, man. Jesus. So I like, this is so wild. So for a- anybody who's listening and when I, you know, I talk about, I talk about this sport all the time and how much it means to me and why I love it so much. One of the reasons, uh, is, is for the stories. It's one of the reasons why I love the MMA hour where Ariel interviews all these fighters. You he- like, I feel, I almost wish fighters would talk more openly about all the lead up. And I know sometimes, Hey, you don't want to talk about stuff. Cause it sounds like you're making excuses or whatever nonsense, but like, I think it makes the sport so much richer. And I mean, look at all this stuff you had to go through and the constant mental battles. And then your dad goes, I mean, I, I can't even imagine. So when I ha- am going through things that I think are quote unquote tough, uh, which, you know, I'm going through some random things right now, but like, it's it just makes you be like put everything in perspective of what is achievable and what you can do. So yeah, man, it's just so phenomenal. So so happy for you, massive win! Congratulations. Just thought we'd talk about it because I hope it's. I think it's interesting for everybody else, like the normal people like me, to to hear the trials, tribulations, the emotions, what your mindset's like. So that's it. On to the next one. Congratulations and uh, yeah, guys, you we're gonna keep talking about Justin's next fight coming up in uh, March fifteenth in Michigan. 